Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is ExpressJS full tutorial series. In the previous episode, we have learned about using Express Generator to generate a shell skeleton of our application. We also saw something interesting called views, which we have not seen previously, right? And that is a template. To today's episode, we are going to learn all about templating. We'll learn about the different types of template engines and how do we work with them. This is part 14 of the ExpressJS full tutorial playlist. The following topics I've already covered in the previous episodes. If you have missed, make sure you check them out so you have continuity in your learning. Today we are focusing on learning about template engines and learning how to implement them in our application. But before we learn about the templating engines, I want to give you a quick use cases of ExpressJS, right? A lot of you will be confused at the start as to why do we need templates right in the ExpressJS, right? Uh, this is something a lot of you have been asking me in the comment section. So I thought I'll just take a minute to talk about it to explain you uh, the different use cases of ExpressJS. So now think of it this way that when you are building a large scale application in a big enterprise or in a startup, there are two ways you can go about it, right? So you can have your API layer or backend separated from UI, right? Let's say for example, if you are building your UI in Angular or React or Vue or plain JavaScript, HTML, Ajax, jQuery, whatever. So your UI is separate and your API is separate, right? That means you're not mixing the UI with your backend. The backend will just be used as an endpoint, like for example, HTTP, some domain.com slash APIs, right? That will be pure play API layer. That's the first use case that you see as a API layer. The second use case is where you want to have the entire stack on Express. That means you want to also have UI used along with Express and Node, right? Now, where are such use cases used? Let's say you're trying to build a quick admin tool for an internal or intranet application, right? Where you want a basic bare minimum UI which should be accessed only inside your organization or inside your intranet or some basic kind of usage if you want to do. This is good that you can build both backend and UI simultaneously. Now there are discussions online on Stack Overflow and other forums where they have different contradictions. Uh, some people are fighting also. So you can, if you want, you can join that fight as well to talk about which is better, right? Which is a good way to build. But the answer really lies in the fact that Express itself is unopinated, which means it is totally up to us as to how we want to use it. You can use it as an API layer, you can use it as a middleware, you can use it as a processing layer, or you can just use it as a full stack, full fledged application layer, where you have both backend and UI together, right? That being said, I will leave it at that. I will not drag this topic anymore, but just wanted to give you different use cases. I hope it's clear. That being said, now let's talk about the today's topic, which is template engine. So what is a template engine? So template engine enables us to use static template files in our application, right? Which means at runtime, we can have some basic static template, which is there and fill up that data with dynamic values. Now, in the past, I have used this kind of template engines to kind of send email templates or kind of, you know, rendering uh, welcome emails and forgot password. You need a static email, right? The content doesn't change always. It's fixed only the data changes. That's where you can use this template engines. You can also use this as a transformation, right? For example, if there are, there is a transactional emails, right? Let's say invoice, right? Invoice structure remains same, only the data becomes dynamic, right? So that places you can use template engines. This approach makes it easy to define a HTML page, right? Now this is, like I said, these are static pages. They don't do anything except for the fact that the data changes. I'll show you with some examples in just a bit. Now, what are the different types of template engines that are available to work with Express and Node? So we have EJS, which is Embedded JavaScript Templating Language. We have PUG, we have Jade, we have Mustache. 
so we have different template engines now if you ask me honestly how they are all different i would say they are not pretty they are not very different from each other if you learn any one of these template engines you should be pretty fine with others as well because the basic of these template engines remains always same right so i'm going to show you some hands on examples to show you how easy it is so you can also comfortably get started all right okay so that being said uh, let me give you some simple working template so i will explain this code in our application itself uh, but to make sure that um, i'll be using the code that we generated in the previous episode so for our uh, viewers who are joining us new on this episode i request you to kindly check out the previous episode so you have the context and the code with you all right that being said let's get jump into the code and that's what we do the best all right so this is the code that we saw yesterday we generated an application using uh, the express generator we, we made notes on what each of this file and folder looks like right but we also made a note here and we said we will cover template engines in the next episode which is this episode right so let's focus this here all right so i told you there are different template engines like pug ejs uh, jade etc mustache now you go to views folder here you'll see an extension right so you will see the extension used right now here you are seeing dot jade right now the question often asked is can we change this once we have created yes of course okay of course we can change it i'll show you in just a bit now you go to your app dot js right now here look at this which says app dot set view engine this is a, this is very important so here you are telling what is the view engine you want to work with here by default it is jade you can also say pug that's up to us you can say ejs that's also fine you can say ejs and then all that right so i'll show you with jade maybe in the next uh, tutorial i will cover pug or ejs again like i said there is no difference so don't think that there is drastic difference it's almost similar and if you understand one you should be pretty much fine with the other so this this is where we are setting that the view engine that is used is jade right so now let's go to index.jade it says welcome to title now the way you should think is every file every view template maps to a route template to a route file you can say think of it this way right this is for your easy understanding here you have index.jade go to your routes you have index right similarly you can also put uh, see here we are saying extends that means it will incorporate this into layout right so it's not directly one to one but for your understanding i would say uh, let me put it uh, rephrase it this way the view template view template is a static html code where where we will replace the values or data dynamically okay i hope that should be clear to you now let me show you with an example now this is my index.jade file here it says welcome to title and you see it's written hash in inside the curly brace which means this is a variable okay now what is variable here go to index here it says render index title arc tutorials now i want one more variable let's go add it and call it subtitle and here i'm saying welcome to the best youtube audience okay so i'm not saying the best channel i'm saying you are the best okay uh, all right so now i added a subtitle right so which says uh, welcome to the best youtube audience now here where am i rendering it i'm rendering it in the index template right now let's go to index and let's add one more paragraph and say i always said this before 
and again use hash and curly brace and say subtitle. Now this subtitle will be coming in from the index.js. Right? Now let's run it. npm run start. Okay, so now we started it and we'll go to localhost 3000. Okay, I always said this before, welcome to the best YouTube audience. So see how easy it is to start building your web application without much effort, right? Uh, it's a static, right? We are just replacing a data here, see, right? So the content, the text, the formatting pretty much remains same. Uh, it's a block of content which has H1, paragraph and all that, right? So similarly, it's easy that you can just create your data, add it here and inside this it will come and replace the value, right? So let's say here the value changes based on some route. Now see, now let's add a new route. Now I'm saying whenever comes uh, tutorials, right? Now here I'm saying or say angular, right? So here I'm saying uh, it should become angular. And here I'm saying welcome to the best angular developers portal. See, now easily I've added a new route with a new route and new data, right? Now let me show you how this, it is still index. See the template is still index, but the data is changing now. Let me show you that. All right, let's go back. So when I do a slash, it says well, arc tutorials and it says welcome to the best YouTube audience. Now I'm saying slash angular. So now it says arc tutorials angular and welcome to the best angular developers portal. What did I do? I did not create any new HTML page, right? All I did was is just added a new, um, a new route and I changed the data, right? Now let's change this data a little bit more, right? So now I'm saying, let's say you want to add a get parameter or a post or a get, right? So this is get, right, basically. So we can have the queries that we want to pass, like like this, let's say I'm going to write a generic one and I'm going to say course is equal to angular, right? I want to have a route like this. Now let's build that dynamic one. Now again, see, I'm not changing of anything in HTML. That's the beauty of this particular framework that you can do it all right here in the express and you don't even have to know about what you are doing in your HTML. It will dynamically take that, right? So query, right? I'm going to first print it and then we are going to see how it goes. All right, so now I have it. So I'm going to say slash tutorials course angular. So here it says course angular, right? So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is query dot course, right? I'm going to take the course and make it dynamic here. So now see, this is all getting beautiful now because now we are making it dynamic. I'll say course title. See, just a couple of lines of static lines is now becoming into a full-fledged dynamic content management system, right? Course name equal to. And here we'll say course name, right? And here we'll say course title. Beautiful. Now see, what started as a simple index with arc tutorials, from there it was hard-coded Angular. Now it has become dynamic tutorials page altogether. Let's see that. Now think of this as an email template, right? Now see, so it says Angular because I passed Angular. Now let's say Node. Now it has become Node, right? Now I'm passing TypeScript. So see, with, without changing anything, I have built my new HTML page with the new data, right? 
and that's the beauty of this particular express generator and this whole templating basically that it allows us to build websites even with minimal knowledge of HTML and front-end again you will not be able to build powerful webs websites let's be very clear uh, the idea whole idea is to make it static with dynamic data for quick rendering right so if you are building welcome back Shridhar or you want to show some data you can directly show that right so so this is how uh, templating works so you when you say extends it will add that right now let's say you want to have a header section right so what I'm going to do is have a new header right and say and just include that so you can say block content so this is the block content that is there so here I'm going to say block content right there will be one more content I'm saying correct so here I'm going to say block content and here again I can say h3 equal to I'll say some data that goes here right so you can you can extend this template and fix it that way so uh, go through that templating there are different template engines it's pretty simple straightforward nothing fancy out here so you can keep building your content block any number of times you want you can have sidebar main um, so <coughs> So that, that's how you build a static website. Again, uh, give it a try. Let me know if you have any particular thing. I'll probably do a live example where I will build a complete email template uh, which will fetch dynamic data. So you can see here some data goes here. Um, so yeah, I'll build a kind of an te email template for you which is used in most uh, common use cases with templating. Uh, go ahead, give it a try, run this learn about um, view engines give it a try add new variables in your routes try to map them in the templates let me know if you have any doubts i'll be happy to help you further all right cool so before we leave um, i'll just quickly point out some differences that is asked in interviews like uh, what's the difference between pug and ejs right um, so these are again same uh, templating engines um, with so these are these are template engines but little bit different in terms of performance wise right um, so sometimes they also ask you that what's the uh, which is a preferred one or which is better right so there is no better as such uh, but having said that pug uh, has a better high performance uh, because it's in, in implemented right with javascript right uh, so it has much better faster performance uh, other than that i don't think there is much any difference so go ahead, uh, try it out, Pug, EJS, Jade, and you should be pretty good on that. All right, so why use template engines? Again, I will not go into that, uh, but these are only for static web pages, I would say. Um, again, it's personal and your team's choice which one to use. But having said that, um, using template engines for rendering static pages is absolutely helpful and will be able to get you jumpstart your backend kind of services quickly. Thank you so much for joining. In the next episode, we'll focus and start with our MongoDB, where we'll learn an introduction to MongoDB, which I've already covered in other series, but I'll still do an intro. And then we'll see how to connect using ExpressJS, how to query, how to write complex queries, etc. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you're enjoying and I hope you're uh, finding this the tutorials useful if there is a, something that you want me to improve or if you have any feedback please drop them in the comment section please do like share comment and subscribe to my channel thank you so much